Welcome to The Fix. Sit down with copywriting experts Nick O'Connor and Glenn Fisher as they review, discuss and improve real world copy sent in by you. This is The Fix. Hello and welcome to an episode of The Fix which is very different to usual uh, and it is a bit of a self-indulgence on my part uh, because quite well, not too long ago, uh, as many of you who follow uh, what we do will know, uh, because I mentioned it elsewhere, I read a book called Lint uh, by a chap called Steve Aylett, which is here. You've got a picture of it. Uh, and I read a lot of books, as people know, uh, but very rarely do I laugh. Um, I can think of two occasions. I read a book by uh, Charlie Kaufman, I think, in, called Ankind, where there's a really funny bit about... Um, an episode of Friends, which was just really made me laugh out loud. And then it, I have to go back to probably Douglas Adams and the color blue um, being described as a person in Hitchhikers, where I, I, I guffawed, I, I made an audible sound laughing. Uh, when I read Lint, I laughed hysterically and out of character for me for a, a long, for many periods, to the point where I was reading in bed with Ruth and she was visibly getting upset and annoyed at how much I was laughing and enjoying the book. Um, so I loved it. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, right, who is this guy? What's going on here? And I was lucky enough to reach out and speak to Steve. And he was um, kind enough to come on the show and let me quiz him for a bit. So I'm going to do that. We're going to talk about creativity. I'm interested in uh, finding out from Steve what makes his mind tick. Um, what inspires him creatively, cre creatively, where he gets ideas from, all kind of stupid, unanswerable questions, but we'll just try and explore them. So that is the purpose of this uh, chat. Steve, hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's it's my pleasure, genuinely. So after all of that preamble and ramble, um, let's just, I want to know, and with the disclaimer, all of these ants like questions are kind of impossible, but, um, what is, where, where does your, um, how do you start? If we take a book like Lynn, which I'm going to encourage people to read. So they'll kind of see things with, with a, your writing process, where do you start? Where's, how do you, what's, what's the first moment? Where does an idea come into your head? Um, well, in the case of Lynn, it was like, a I mean, I, I have kind of the, the opposite uh, problem to a, a lot of people in that I just have loads of ideas all the time. And the question is how to, if I'm going to make something with those ideas in them, how do I package them? And I'm very interested in the idea, and I've got more and more into this over the years, of like how to make a, have a, a form where I can put in as many ideas as possible or get, I can just get rid of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of ideas. Um, most of them original ideas, like as many as possible in the shortest period of time. And Lynn was a kind of a, it was a great experience for me because it was, it was just perfect for that. It meant, cause it's basically about a, science fiction writer who didn't actually exist. It's written like a biography of him. But I could basically say, oh, and then Lynn came up with this idea and then he said this and then he did, did this and then he wrote this story where this happened and someone else said this idea about that. And so I could just like get rid of so much stuff. And um, oh yeah, it was, yeah, it was really juicy, you know? Wait, you you use the visual reference there um, of like of layering, and you might have said layering. And I've weirdly one of my notes on here. I don't make many notes, but I wrote the word layering, and I I wanted to understand like one of the criticisms um, when you uh, your book was featured, uh, Lint was featured on a Good Read, um, where people bring in their books and uh, that they like and and discuss them. One of the criticisms actually, and when I look around on the internet about um, the book and, and other people, 
they kind of go, oh, well, there's, there's so much, it's so deep, it's, there's too many things going on, it's very hard to get through it all. I personally love that. That's part of what I like. And that layering, um, for me, of establishing maybe something, that you establish certain things and then add to them and add to them and add to them. Um, what I thought about in that regard, and, and we all do that in any kind of writing, you've got to establish layers and, and you, you're conscious of your reader following those and that joke or that will work better once you've established this. I wondered how much do you think about your reader or the reader when you're writing this stuff? Obviously, you're describing getting the ideas out of your head. How much do you think, oh, actually, if I say this now, then this this next thing will have more of an effect? Does that go through your mind at all? Yeah, it does. But I think of myself as being the reader or myself or someone like me. I mean, I, I write the kind of thing that I would like to read. I mean, I would love to have come across something like Lynn. Um, and so, yeah, I do have a have an eye to that, but I I make an assumption of, I guess I make an assumption of some intelligence and, you know, some and a sense of humor. Yeah. I guess. Uh, if you don't have those things, it's not you're not going to really get into it. And I do like um, there's I, there's a, a reference I talk about Lynch writing as being set up in such a way that like every sentence comes directly at you, so it's like boom, 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 all the time. And I love that. And some other people love it, but it's not everyone's cup of tea because it's for some people it's too intense and it's for some people it's just exhausting and for some people it's irritating um, because they want to kind of like sleep into a book or something like or, or just read read something they've read before uh, and this thing of having stuff constantly and or Quite often, you know, usually original stuff coming straight at them all the time. Like, you know, it's, and it can be a bit much for them. But I love that. I think that's gold dust. Yeah. And, um, just with hypothetic, I could also do that because in the case of hypothetic, it was just like I found a kind of balance between having, I mean, there's kind of a story, there's the appearance of a story. But it's really kind of a big poetic flow. So, I mean, all I'm basically like, I'm kind of interested in, I'm interested in ideas and jokes and images. Um, and I'm not so interested in storyline, though. And, and it's kind of like the thing of, um, you know, people talk about thinking outside the box, that, that old cliche well i don't know where that box is i've never come across it i don't know it's a bit freudian actually but i just don't know what i you know so i'm interested in all this other stuff and i will occasionally i guess if it's necessary drag all that stuff back into the vicinity of the box so that people can you know have some kind of reference point but there's so much stuff. I mean, I, I tend to think, I mean, I do think in um, shapes and images and sort of architectural forms. And if you know anything about um, neurodiversity, uh, that there are people, it's becoming accepted now that people think in lots of different ways. Some people think in like visual snapshots, some people think in kind of lists or, you know, ingredients or mathematical equations or flavors, um, or in my case, shapes and colors. Um, some, some people even think in words and sentences, although I think that those, those people are actually in a minority, although we're all told that we think in words and sentences, but I, I really don't think we, I think. Some people do, but a lot of people, most people probably don't if they really look at how they think. But um, it means, and, and it's, I don't know how much of it can be taught, but if you do think spatially the way that I do, it's possible to kind of like 
just play with ideas as shapes. All our, all ideas have shapes, all words also have shapes. And it's just like playing with Lego, with colored Lego or stickle brick or whatever, you know, and just sticking stuff together. And sometimes those things will kind of like activate when they're stuck together. Um, and that's when it kind of gets juicy and it's just kind of like, it's just playing around. What um, um, I, I think I understand to a certain extent what you mean. And I'm, I'm trying to think of it in terms of, so I have one of the beautiful things about your writing and, and on a, on a word level, on a, a, when you read it and see it visually on the page. Um, and I think it's the case in, um, in lint in hyper thick, um, which is like lint, lint times to the power 20 of like non secretary weird juxtaposition of things, but your language is so, um, it, something about the juxtaposition of unexpected phrases. And I've I get the feel. correct me if I'm wrong, but is it the case if you go, all right, I'll take this from here, this from here, put them together. Sometimes that makes those unexpected phrases and you're like, ah, oh, right, that, that's got something nice to it. You, you might not, un what I kind of want to know is, do you, do you fully always understand why it, or is there no why? It's just that looks nice together. Uh, those particular words, that kind of adjective with that now, it just, it's so playful that it, I, I'm at times laughing going, wow, I can't believe you described it like that. It almost makes no sense, but at the same time, it makes all sense. That can, yeah. how do, I guess I'm talking about your editing. To me, the, to me the, the, the shape of it makes sense. I, I just know that when, I just know that it activates and it releases energy. Um, and it's possible to kind of get that wrong. It's possible to, uh, kind of get a couple of words and like, oh, let's stick them together. And actually they don't go together, but some people will try and pull them together and go, oh, that's quirky. That's, you know, but it doesn't really work. But I just, sometimes it's just obvious that a certain word, the shape of the word visually is calling out to have something else attached to it. Um, it's like the word kind of has feelers sticking out of it um, that, are, that are aching for something to attach to it, you know, and, and another word will just kind of come in, but it'll be, but it'll be from a, a, it'll be a word from a different, it'll just, you know, when there are two words that have never been put together before, uh, I would, but they really belong together. You know, it's like the greatest kind of love story you could imagine. It's just like they, they kind of like just like, why, why hasn't anyone ever put these together before? You know, like they just, but they're from different, the words belong in different principles or they're, they're the jargon of completely different professions or something like that. So they've kind of been kept artificially apart. Yeah. But they are, but the shape of them are built so perfectly locked together and release energy so it's great when that happens and uh for me that happens all, all the time and i'm just it, it's for me more of a um i've only just got to the point at this point in life where i can turn it when i could where i can switch it off um and I basically did that by kind of giving up writing for a couple of years. I kind of put my foot down, you know, and it's like, because it was almost like the the tail was wagging the dog at one point, and it was like, you know, well, the, but um, there's just, there isn't really, actually I was going to say there isn't really any limit to the number of ideas out there. It isn't infinite, but I mean, if, a billion people came up with a billion ideas every second for a, a billion years. 
that would be how many ideas there are out there. So there's plenty, is what I'm saying. And human beings don't seem to be interested in looking for them, but they're all there. They're right there, you know. You Sorry, can just bring me an idea of, uh, of a book around the last idea. Um, what happens if you get to the last idea? But um, I'm interested, so for, to fill people in, because I, I, hopefully people will go away and discover a little bit more about your work, Steve. But uh, with Lint, that's kind of a, if that's a book. It's a it's a typical like narrative, or whatever narrative there is there, but it's following a guy. It's it's prose. It, it goes on that uh, natural form. Hyperthick is a, is a, a comic, a graphic novel, or whatever, however you want to term it. But it, I feel as though when I read those in succession, and and I've read around yourself a little bit and what you've described there, by taking ideas from everywhere, by looking at stuff and putting new things together and relying on the energy that's created, and I I kind of I completely understand that that idea that you. That's how you create something interesting and new that people haven't seen before, but necessarily that that might not that kind of might defy description or easy form. I know a lot of people would pick up hyperthick and they'll be reading, going, "What what's going on here?" This like yeah. imagery with from old um, kind of uh, old comic strips um, with new, very modern and very strangely juxtaposed language that sometimes seems related sometimes isn't for for certain people will just look at it and understand that that particular image with that that phrase just goes very well is that what what happened for you is is the sense that you just realized that the form was restricting you a little bit and that's why you needed to kind of allow yourself that freedom um yeah and it was it was and it felt very uh freeing doing hyperthick um but I kind of now, the next thing I'm, oh, and also doing those cards, you know, the tricks to brick and, and that um, tarot thing that I did. But now what I'm doing next is kind of raining, well, not re not really raining things here, but it's almost like um, I'm basically write, writing a book next, which has, it has a linear narrative it has an understandable story and it's kind of which i have done before but not for a long time i always forgotten how to do it. how to tell you know like why do characters do this why would this character do? you know that kind of thing but um it's it's it feels almost like the most perverse thing because it looks it will look so normal, like from a distance, it'll look so normal. And you can even get in quite close to it and like, oh, this, there's this character doing this and this and this. But um, underneath the skin, it's completely, you know, like it's my stuff. Sure. Um, so there's all this kind of fluorescent lightning going off just under the skin. Um, even though the characters are doing things for perfectly explainable reasons. So it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting, oh, well, I'm, an interesting I'm, experience. I'm excited to see it uh, and read it. Um, I assume it will be in, yeah, you're saying it's a book, so it will be in the written form. I, I never know quite what to expect it, uh, from your stuff. Um, what, have you, just a, a small detail just for personal knowledge, when, when will that surface, do you know? Are you still oh, well, I've only I've only just started it really. Oh. So it take a couple of years. Yeah. It's a big project, but it's really nice to actually have a you know, a big kind of meaty project to be Yeah. Oh great. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um so so on on that, I would like to ask you one more thing before um I let you go. I, I just because I I find it so interesting in the sense that I, I like the comedian Stuart Lee, so I listen to Stuart Lee and I he like your work and reference that so i'm always looking for like intertextuality and where they what what so i wanted to ask what kind of writers and not just writers can be anything whether it's jazz music or whatever but what kind of stuff do you read if anything um and what kind of stuff inspires you and what stuff do you enjoy reading and and are there any particular writers that you 
over the years have, have always kind of gone back to? Um, well, I'm very into, um, well, Voltaire, I really like. Um, I, I greatly admire um, Rudy Rucker, science fiction writer, one of the few actually original writers alive. Um, and, but then there are some, there are some things that I read because they're, because they're flat. I can almost like use them to deflect off of into something interesting. I remember right. I remember once I wrote something while listening to an audio book of, uh, Donna Tartt's The Secret History, because that book is utterly flat there isn't a single original idea in it it's just this granular surface and it's perfect for kind of like reacting against or something i don't know anyway it works at the time but um but i am also into stand up uh you know and i, I know quite a few stand ups and i did stand up very briefly for like about a year but um it was and i was all right at it but it was so kind of I mean I'm a complete introvert and I had to really kind of get myself worked up into a state where I could do it by kind of modeling an extrovert and pretending to be someone else and it was like like doing a violence to myself really you know and it ended up just not being worth not being worth it but people like um yeah, Stuart, Stuart Lee and um, Andrew O'Neill, like that, kind of have, have invited me along to do stuff, but I had to kind of just give it up in the end. But it's in, it's an interesting thing because it's sort of like stand up is a bit more like poetry because it doesn't have a, um, well, it doesn't necessarily have a big story structure. It kind of it can it can jump around and throw images and you know that kind of thing so i um i do like stand up uh, i'm trying to think of other writers oh my god there's not really much at the moment to be honest it was fair the first okay yeah, I'm, I'm interested i've not come across rudy rooker so i'll i'll, uh, I'll definitely go out and uh, check that out um it's it's just it's interesting to to get people's perspectives perspectives and, and and different ideas i i love it as i say i i thoroughly enjoyed lynn um i look very much forward to uh whatever concoction you manage to uh, create next uh steve um i think it's really good i think i i hope there's uh, more people will read it and enjoy it and i i i wish there was more of that um more people writing with that same freedom that's that, that's what it felt like to me it felt like someone writing with freedom and um didn't kind of not not care what people thought but just was was content to kind of take you along a path and go well we'll see where we get and uh, see what happens it's for the joy of the writing almost yeah well i mean it's more or less had to uh i've more or less had to fall back into that because there's, there's more chance of me being struck by lightning than kind of you know, becoming a big commercial success. I really, I mean, I did when I was younger. I did have those those fantasies of being a big famous writer, and uh, I had to just let go of that. Not not through becoming very kind of particularly spiritually enlightened or anything, but just because it was clear it was just never going to happen. So it was like you know, oh okay, right. But it, that is very free. It is very freeing. Actually. I mean, it's a it's a personal question, and you don't feel obliged to answer it. But how, when you were kind of seeking, um, oh, oh well, I'm assuming you have. But have you? Did you seek like people to? Did you get feedback going up? This is not for us. I'm just not. I'm not seeing like the stuff that other other people are clearly seeing in this. Um, or have you? By the time you got to like writing lint, was that just you knew? who would you wanted to go with a particular small publisher or what yeah when i got to writing lynn i was 
um, I was pleasing myself and letting the creative thing happen completely and didn't really have a, I mean, I remember thought the one time that I had a big, uh, contract with a big publisher was with, with, with Orion. I guess this was in the late nineties, early two thousands. Um, and they said, I'll write this big series of books. And, uh, and I wrote this, uh, series of four books called the accomplice books. And they were, I kind of like thought, well, this has got to have a plot. So I'll just throw in a lot of plot, but it was very, it was, just, it was still just completely weird. And that it just, you know, I'm in retrospect, I've realized that I should have, that I was supposed to, and I've said this before elsewhere, but I, I was supposed to basically sell out at that point and just write something very normal. And I didn't realize that. So the accomplice books are still really, really weird. And, uh, they didn't, <laughs> you know, Orion just dropped me like a hot potato. And so that was the end of my commercial career. Um, and then I think, yeah, I'm pretty shortly after that, I wrote Lint, I think. So, you know, um, uh, self I'm glad it happened, but, um, it's, uh, it's, it's strange, strange how, um, you can be like, I, 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 as I say, I genuinely, genuinely am perplexed that when I read it, I was like, this is so deeply clever and good and funny and joyous. How the, how the hell is not more people reading this? Um, it's, it, it fuddles me. It fuddles my brain. Yeah. I mean, it, it befuddles me too, but I try not to think about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know, try, then I've kind of, I have, yeah, it's much more healthy for me to just let go of yeah. all that. And it's and the to be honest, um the writing is better as well when I let go of all that. You know, just um uh, yeah, it's just there's just you know, there's there's so much of it. I I have more of it than I can that I know what to do with. Uh so you know this is the thing i've i have i have trouble finding the box you know yeah. the box that you're supposed to think outside of I, i've never been in there and um uh may, maybe this maybe this next book will be more approachable for some people but i don't know because every time i try Every time in the past, when I've tried to kind of like do something a little more straight, I just can't help but be get kind of mischievous, you know, <laughs> can't help but like have interesting things happening, you know. So, um, it's, it's not going to be a straight book, it's not going to, but I'm glad to, but although it might look like one from, the, from a great distance, so it's not going to be straight. Well, you've got at least one reader, and I'm sure there's uh, some plenty, plenty more out there, Steve. And hopefully, a few will go and check out your stuff uh, after listening to this. Um, I'll let you get off. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I appreciate it enormously. Um, anybody watching who would like to read Lint uh, or find out Hyperthick, uh, there's all sorts of links. I'll put them all in uh, below this video. Um, please do go check it out. Um, if uh, drop me a line, and uh, I'd love to talk more about your experience of the books as well. So get in touch and let me know. Um, otherwise, thank you very much, Steve. Um, it's been a pleasure. All right, thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, letting me have you. That's a strange uh, phrase, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoy the fix and want to get access to even more good stuff. Join the Fix Accelerator today. Get access to special masterclasses from Nick and me. Watch expert interviews with industry legends. Join live copy feedback sessions every week and get connected to our very own private copy network. Visit thefixaccelerator.com for more information.